There's nothing quite like growing soft fruit at home and nothing worse than when all the birds and other wildlife come and take it. So we need to protect it and that's where fruit cages come into action. In this video, I'm going to show you what it's like to build a quality fruit cage and we're going to talk about some of its benefits. Now, not everything in life is easy and the same holds true with gardening. In an ideal world, we would have perfectly flat ground, all the structures in place just when we need them, before the plants are in the ground. However, in reality, we're always trying to adapt as we go and this ground isn't flat. As you can see, it's domed from side to side. So it's higher in the middle and much lower on the, the edges. And it runs on a, a sort of downhill sort of level. So it's not an ideal place in which to build a cage. And we also have fully grown plants. So we have to work around that. And that would normally make it really difficult to install a cage, but not in this instance. When I took over this area of the garden, it had horrible scaffolding and framing to support netting. And it was okay for a while, but it didn't look very good. The first thing to do was to take down the entire scaffolding system. This took a couple of days as all the bolts had rusted. Once this was done, I was now in a position to start the installation of the fruit cage. I purchased the cage from Northern Polytunnels, the same place I'd bought my polytunnel. The quality of the tunnel is second to none and I hoped that the cage would be the same and I can tell you I wasn't disappointed. Although you could build this alone, I would suggest you get a friend to help because some things are just easier to manage later in the build. With that in mind, my friend Danny from the Great Vine Allotment has come to help me build this cage. His channel link will be in the description below, so make sure you check it out. Now, before you start to build this, I strongly recommend that you read all the instructions thoroughly and take the time to check that all the parts are present and make sure you have all the correct tools. Talking of tools, what you're going to need is a tape measure, a marking pen, uh, a, a hammer, a block of wood, spirit levels, 13mm spanners, two 17mm spanners, some secateurs, a drill and a step ladder. Part number one is to lay out all the roof components on the ground as shown. Now each style of cage is totally different and obviously the size as well. So this will ensure that you have the overall shape correct. This layout can then be used as a guide for your upright posts. It's important to get the correct height ready for the netting because this is a predetermined height. So to do this what we need to do is measure off the posts uh, at the correct height and mark them with a pen and they need to be measured off at 1.9 meters. Detach one of the corner fittings and place the upright in its place. Refit the fitting to the top of the post. Use a wooden block or mallet to drive the tube into the ground. Check the post is level as it's going in because once it's in, you ain't gonna get it out and it's important that they're as straight as possible. Now, on the ground that I have, it's a little more difficult because of the fact that if I put them all at 1.9, then I'm not gonna be able to keep it level at the top because my ground is sloping and it's also concave. I need to adjust for that, but you may not. If you've got flat ground, great. If you've got sloping ground or concave ground like I have here or heaped ground, then you will need to adjust for it too. Once all your upright posts are in place, you can reinsert the roof poles. A point to note here is to make sure you add the plastic bung into each corner fitting of the cage as you build it. This will prevent any moisture and rain getting down into those tubes and sitting in the bottom because don't forget the bottom of that post is in the ground, it'll just fill with water and it'll rust away. So all we need to do now is to continue this repetitive job in uh, laying out the poles, replacing the corners, with the upright posts and then connecting them. And it's quite an easy task to do and you just keep going until you've reached the full extent of your modular cage. So once the cage is built, we need to uh, build the doors and we do that again by laying out the doors and then on the one side of the door, we put on two hinges and on the opposite side, we fit the latch for the door. 
What I will tell you here is make sure you've got them the right way around so the bolts are facing into the cage. Because initially when I did this, I had it completely wrong and I had, them, I had to remove the door and uh, take, turn them around. So uh, save yourself that job. Make sure those bolts, when you stand it up, will be facing into the cage. So once we've done that, we need to slide one door post with a flattened end at the top through the first door hinge and add one hinge collar. Continue to the next hinge and add another collar. Then loosely tighten. At this point, you may wish to fix the door clip keyhole brackets to the frame. Push the door post into the ground and secure it to the keyhole bracket using two 17mm spanners. Place the door in the closed position to align the second door post. Slide the door catch into the second door post and push it into the ground and secure it to the second keyhole bracket. Lift the door into position and secure it in place by tightening the hinge collars. And that's it. That's essentially your frame then for your cage and it's an easy process to do you know it's just uh, a modular design and it's repetitive and that's all you have to worry about if you can get those posts down into the ground you are laughing so now we need to net it now this is a plastic netting for the sides and it comes at the 1.9 meter height and this is why it's quite important to ensure that you get the height of those poles right it's no good saying, oh, well, I want a little bit taller because I'm taller or I want a little bit shorter because I'm shorter and I don't need it. You need to get it at that right level so that we can put this netting on. When you first start, start at the right hand door post and secure the netting with cable ties. Approximately one at the top and a further four on the post. Cut around the mesh for the door latch. Roll out the netting around the cage and ensure that you pull it tight and secure with cable ties as you go. Once you reach the second door post, once you've gone right around the cage, cut and secure the cable. Once you've gone right around and you reach the second door post, then all you've got to do then is secure it and then cut the mesh. For the top, we've got a material netting. This is a bird proof netting. It's really strong and it's good because you can tension this. So pull the netting over the whole cage. What I would suggest you do, which is a little different from the instructions that Northern Polytunnel give, is take the netting inside of the cage and pull it up through the center of the cage because it's easier to roll out from the center than it is to roll out just from one side. Pull the net over the whole cage and ensure equal amounts to each side. Now, I've had an overlap right around. Obviously, the bigger the cage you have, the harder it is to do and as you can see we were doing this in quite a windy day if you can do it in a calm day all the better but if not it's fine do as we've done here and we are securing on each end as we go now the great thing about this netting is you can pull it really tight and then you can roll up any excess of net and secure it with cable ties. What I would suggest you do as well, once you've done the whole perimeter, get into the center of the cage and just put one or two ties per internal post. That'll stop the net from lifting in heavy winds. So we'll keep that down tight. And also it helps hold everything tight together. And the last thing that we need to do then is secure the base of the walls netting. And we go around with these big square pegs that they give us and we put in two for every two and a half meters so for every section of this cage about two pegs go in if you find you've got a section that was for some reason a little bit loose or like here with us there was a little bit of a bubble in the netting because of the shape of the ground well put a few extra in there you you do get a few more than you you need and and if not, you can buy them online anyway and just put a few extra that will push that netting down tight and you can tension it really well. And essentially that's it for your cage. Your cage is built. This fruit cage is huge and what I love about it is the fact that it's got quality materials, it's really been built to last and it's modular. So each of these squares is like a cage in itself. So it allows you to build as big as you want or as small as you want. It is really a fantastic piece of kit. Northern Polytunnels have produced another fantastic product and I just love it. I can easily get in and out of this cage really easily. I've got two doors and the beauty about it is I can allow my poultry 
to run around in here now eating all the pests and I haven't got to worry about them wandering off or anything getting to them so they can literally just come in here and scratch around doing me a favour and making my life easier too. All the links for Northern Polytunnels will be down in the description below if you're ever thinking about buying a polytunnel or a cage or something else and I can tell you that they're going to come with the simplified gardening stamp of approval. They're just brilliant quality. If you found value in this video, then please give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows it's a quality video and will share it with others. And if you want to see how good the quality of the polytunnel is, well, this is the video that you should watch, which is my six month update of my purchase when I bought my Northern Polytunnel. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks you reap what you sow and I'll see you in the next one.